Hey, it's Rob Jigler and we are heading to Bush Willow Creek Ranch in the Lowfelt near Hoodsburg. This is about 16 kilometers from Hoodsburg. So from Joburg, you can either go the N4 route through Belfast or you can go the N1 route through Paul Okwane. This is a brand new spot for us. It is in the Hoodsburg area, which is quite familiar to us and, and one of the places that I really like coming to in the Lowfelt. So really looking forward to it. We prefer the N1 route through Paul Okwane. It's just a nicer drive better highway and then driving through Heinitzburg and Machubaskloof is really cool as well. It's a more picturesque sort of drive and the roads are a bit better. It does take a bit longer than going via the N4 through Belfast. The road to the campsite from the main tar road is gravel. It's in pretty decent condition. There's tractors and vehicles going up and down it all the time. So a little bit bumpy in some spots, but it's not something that requires any kind of special vehicle. You just need a sensible vehicle to drive on that road. This is a very well appointed campsite. There's a shower with hot and cold water of course, and there's a toilet facility, and there's also a wash basin with cold water too. There's a nice little kitchen facility as well that has a gas fired three plate hob. The kitchen also has a washing station with hot and cold water, and all of this is set on top of a nice set of cupboards where you can store stuff, and inside those cupboards there are some basics as well, so there is a little lighter for the gas for example and a washing sponge and some dishwashing liquid and some really basic stuff that is convenient to have if you haven't brought it with you. Note that the doors in the cupboard are not lockable so they're not monkey proof or baboon proof. There's a kettle as well that you can fit onto the gas stove so that's nice if you don't have one of your own. The kitchen and bathroom are all under cover and one of the nice things about this big cover that's over the kitchen space area is that there's also a dining table if you can call it that so a table with a set of benches and that is really nice to have for a couple of reasons firstly because you can go and sit and eat there as opposed to sitting and eating with your food on your lap at the fire which is also quite nice but it is convenient to have that and of course it provides shelter from the rain so if it does rain and we've had a bit of rain while we're here we're here in summer and of course it does rain occasionally in summer or it can rain quite often in summer but it's nice that there's this nice shaded area that you can sit under if it does rain you can have your meals there you can even chill out there so it's a reasonably sized space i would say it's about maybe five or six meters by five or six meters so it's a pretty good space to have you do however have to bring your camping chairs for sitting around the fire there in terms of seating arrangements it's only the bench table set up that you would use for eating and that sort of stuff so if you're going to sit around the fire sit and look out over the dam then you need your camping chairs speaking of the dam there is a watering hole in front of the campsite so the campsite looks out onto this watering hole this is not just a nice vista but it is also pretty cool because there's wildlife on the farm and the wildlife come down to the dam to drink so it is a watering hole stroke dam as well and of course there's quite a few birds on the dam so it's also nice to see speaking of birds there is a plethora of birds here so lots of bird calls which really lends a beautiful ambiance to the campsite for the avid bird watcher then this is a great spot there are quite a few trees of course it's not always easy to spot the birds but certainly a lot of bird sounds coming through and if you've got a bit of patience and you're going to sit and wait for them then you will spot quite a few bird species as well speaking of trees there are a lot of trees and there's great shade on this campsite which you need in the low felt summer especially there's a beautiful big false marula underneath which you can pitch your tent and that area has been cleared out very nicely it's been flattened as well and it's a really nice place to put your tent or tents if you are multiple people. Now officially the site can accommodate eight tents including rooftop tents and caravans is what is specified. I'm not entirely sure that you could easily fit eight tents in that space. I suppose it tends or depends on the size of the tents you have. Our tent takes up a fair amount of that space that's allocated for putting up your tent so it might be quite a squeeze to get eight tents up there. There's some shaded car park as well where you could presumably put up some tents to or park a caravan or two caravans. There's enough space there definitely for two caravans. So that could give you a bit more space to put up tents and I suppose you could put up a tent here and there on the site as well provided it's a relatively small tent. So maximum of eight tents apparently. However, the space is a little bit constrained I think to put up eight tents the size of the tent that we have. 
Now in the summer, of course, in the low felt, it can get really hot. We're here in summer. It has been raining, it has been grey, so it's a bit unseasonally cold, you know, for this time of year. However, there is a great little splash pool on the site, so I can imagine that on a nice hot summer day, this would be a perfect place to sit and look out over the watering hole while enjoying a cool drink. This is concrete fire pit as well, also nice to have for a couple of reasons. Firstly, because camping is about sitting around the fire at night, or at least that's one of the main things with camping that we love to do. But also, of course, then you can bry, and there's a bry grid, which is nicely set up because it's a two-club roaster with different levels at which you can put it. So that's, that's pretty cool to have. There is also something that I really like and something that we don't see in many campsites which is a drum to smother the fire. So at the end of the evening, when you're done brying, you're done sitting in front of the fire, you can smother the fire and go to bed with no worries about there being hot coals. And speaking of fire hazards, there is a fire extinguisher on the site too. Now there's no electricity. However, there is lighting. So there are a couple of battery operated lamps that are around the seating area and in the bathroom as well which is nice to have so no electricity but I would say adequate lighting for a camping type setup like this. You will of course still need your own lighting headlights and that sort of stuff for walking around getting to your tent and to the car and all that sort of thing so there isn't that much lighting the lighting is pretty much around the seating area and the bathroom. As I've mentioned, there's no electricity, so just be prepared for that. There's a tap, as well as the taps at the sink and basin. However, I don't know if the water is potable, so I do suggest that bring your own water with you. In the kitchen, you'll find two bins, one for organic waste and one for all your other waste. So I'm assuming that your organic waste will all get composted. Like I said, this is a working farm, and they have put a lot of effort into conservation as well on the farm. There's no grass or lawn here. However, the entire area has been cleared and it is sandy, so it doesn't get muddy. You know, it's been raining, for example, over the few days before we got here and a bit of rain while we're here, but there's no mud at all on the site. So it's a very sandy type environment. The cordoned off area around the false marula where you can put your tent is about 10 meters by 10 meters. Then there's also a couple of false marulas here around the fireplace and also the kitchen area and bathroom area. And that's again another, I would say, 15 meters by 10 meters. So there's a fair amount of space here. And in addition to that, there is a place to park your vehicles. So, and that's quite significant as well. You could easily fit three vehicles in that space. There is no shop here. What you can do though is get wood. So you can order wood and they'll bring wood to the site for you. The wood is excellent. It is proper hardwood great for brying and also great for the fire so i must commend them on the wood it is some of the best that we have ever had at the time that we are here you get a bag that is 25 kilograms for 100 rand activity wise this is pretty much a come and chill campsite so there isn't a lot to do within the area however you can go cycling or walking on the existing farm roads and there's wildlife as well to see so that's a nice thing to do when you're on the farm for us though, this is kind of one of those nice come and chill, sit, look out over the watering hole and just enjoy being in nature and away from the hustle and bustle. We are in or rather close to Hoodspread and of course there's a lot of stuff to do around Hoodspread, the Kruger National Park, the nearest gate is open or Palaboa. They're both between 70 and 80 kilometers away, so that's a relatively short drive to get into the Kruger Park. There are a number of things to do in the Lofeld area as well. Mariepskop is quite close to here. Check out my episode on that. I definitely recommend that you go and check that out if you haven't been there. The Blader River is very close to here as well. So you go to the Blader River Canyon or you can hang out at the Blader River picnic site. Also done a video on that, so have a look at that episode too. There aren't any stipulated gate times. However, you do have to inform the owner approximately what time you're going to arrive. Driving from Gauteng, of course, it's a fair drive. It's about six, seven hours maybe. So you've got to think about that and what time you're going to arrive and potential for traffic, etc., on the road. So although they aren't stipulated gate times, do make arrangements with the owner so they know what time you're going to come in so that they're adequately prepared. So as I've said, the nearest town is Hoodspread, which is 14 kilometers away from the campsite. So if you need to get supplies, it's pretty easy to pop out there and get whatever you need. We found the site to be almost perfect. There's almost nothing to complain about. 
it's really well set up. It's obviously well cleaned and kept. When we've come here, everything's in working order. If there's something to complain about, it's a minor thing. The taps are dripping a little bit and we will inform the owners of that before we leave so that they can fix that up. But otherwise, it's in really good nick. In the time that we've been here, nobody's come around, which is great. We kind of like that. We kind of like to be left alone to do our camping and be away from hustle and bustle and people and stuff. We did order some wood, which was delivered to us. But other than that, nobody's really come here and that's nice. You know, I kind of like that. Um, I'm sure that they will come and clean up the ash and so on, for example, when we've left. But the camp's in really great condition. We have nothing but good things to say about it. We really love this place, actually. There is some cell phone signal, or there's cell phone signal for the most part, I would say. And so you are able to get and receive calls. Um, it does go a little bit from time to time. But, you know, for us, when we're out here, we don't really want cell phone signal. We'd actually be much better for us without cell phone signal at all uh, but you can get a hold of people if you really need to and you can get a hold of the owners as well if you really need to so yeah the signal's there and it's it comes and goes vehicle requirements as i said earlier you don't need any kind of special vehicle to get you the roads are pretty good all the way up until you turn off from the main hood spread road which is a tarred road and then you're onto a dirt road, which is also pretty decent. It's a little bit bumpy from time to time, but you don't need any kind of special vehicle. You don't need any kind of special clearance. You need sensible clearance, of course. And so vehicle-wise, you don't need any kind of special vehicle to get to the campsite. You can easily tow a trailer or a caravan here as well. So this is very much accessible for caravan camping too. Booking is via the website or email. The links are below for your convenience. Although there is wildlife on the site, there are no, I would say, large, dangerous wildlife. So there's no elephant, there's no buffalo, there are no lions. But obviously there are probably leopards on the site. There is supposedly some hyena as well, which we have heard. We haven't seen them. And there's generally a lot of antelope that you would expect on the site. So there is blue wildebeest, for example, and so on. So I wouldn't say that there are necessarily any large dangerous wildlife on the site. Maybe you could consider the hyenas dangerous, but you know, typically we don't have any kind of interactions with these animals when we go camping, even if we're wild camping. We have been warned about monkeys and baboons, but we have not come across any, we haven't seen any, we haven't heard any, so maybe we're just lucky. But of course, you must always be cognizant of that and be ready or ensure that you set your stuff up and put your stuff away so that you don't have the monkeys, baboons or any other wild animals coming to interfere with your stuff, especially your food. Please put your food away and do not feed the animals. This is a working farm, so they do have a couple of tractors and trailers associated with the tractors that occasionally are driving up and down. So you will from time to time hear a tractor going up and down. It's not intrusive and it's only really in the daytime, but just be aware of that it is a working farm. So for example, there's a tractor going past right now, if you can hear it. So what type of camp is this for? Pretty much anyone. There is lighting, although there's no electricity. There is hot and cold water, there's gas-fired stove, there's bathrooms, there's a toilet, there's a great place to set up your campsite, there's a wonderful campfire area, there's a setup for you to braai, there's also a splash pool. There's also a table where you can eat or sit or set up stuff, so table bench type setup. There's some cupboards for storing your stuff if you want to note that they're not monkey proof. There are one or two basics here like washing liquid for washing your dishes and there is a lighter for the gas-fired system and for lighting your fire as well. Bins are provided. Be sure to remember to separate your organic and non-organic waste. There's lots of shade. And if you don't have a tent, one can be arranged for you or tents can be arranged for you. Arranged for you at an additional cost, of course. What is there not? There is no electricity. And that's all that there's not. So, would I recommend Camp Nguni? 100%. Yes. Absolutely loved it. So, I hope you found that informative. I hope you liked the episode. Please do hit the like button if you did. If you haven't subscribed, then do subscribe. To those of you that have subscribed, really appreciate it. Love the support that you guys are giving. Please leave a comment below as well. Ask questions. Tell me about your experience here if you've been here as well. 
Uh, any comments, general comments, I love to hear from you guys and I love to get that interaction with you as well. So until the next episode, go everywhere, see everything, have a great time.